Hello everyone. Good day. How are you for this day? Um, my name is Ariel Juliano Valentai from the School of St. Nicholas College of Business and Technology in San Fernando, Pampanga. So we will talk about the account user. So when you talk about account user, when users attempt to log on to a device or to access system resources, Windows uses the process of authentication to verify the identity of the users. So authentication offers when users enter a username and a password to access a user account. Windows uses single sign-on or SSO, which allows users to log in once to access all system resources versus requiring them to log in each time they need to access an individual one. User, when we talk about this user account, so user account allow multiple users to share a single computer using their own files and settings. Windows 10. So when we talk about here in Windows 10, Windows 10 offer two account types, which when we open the computer, we will see the two two account types inside. So the administrator and the users. So in previous topic of the Windows, there was also a guest in the past computers in like for example in Windows 7 going to now. Then now in Windows 10, they remove a guest account but in Windows 10, there are also two administrators. We will talk about the two administrator accounts. So the first, ad first account is the administrator account. So administrator account has complete control over a computer. Users with this type of accounts can change settings globally, install programs, get through the user's account control or they call it UAC. So an elevation to perform a task required. So the one is the standard user account. So standard user account have limited control over a computer users with this type of account can run application, but they cannot install programs. So this standard user account can change system settings, but only settings that do not affect other users' account. So after the Windows installation, Windows installation is the process of the installing of the Windows computer. So we need it to finalize. So during the finalization of this installation, um, we have two um, installation updates. So the first is the Windows update, and then the second is the device manager. So the first is the Windows update, to update the operating system or the OS after the initial installation. So Microsoft Windows update is used to scan for new software and to install service packs and patches. And then the second is the device manager. So device manager is the after installation verify that all the hardware is installed correctly. The device manager is used to, lo to locate device problems and to install the correct or updated drivers in Windows. We will move into other installation methods. So, in other installation methods, a standard of Windows is sufficient for most computer users in a home or something in a small office environment, but there are cases when a custom installation process is required. Um, a standard installation is done via the installation media like, for example, DVD or USB drives that provided by Microsoft and an interactive process. The installer prompts the user for setting such as time zone and system language. A custom installation of Windows can save time and provide a consistent configuration across computers within a large organization. A popular technique to install Windows across many computers is 
to perform insulation in one computer and use it as a reference insulation. The remo remote network installation. Here in remote, remote network installation, a proper method for OS or the operating system installation in environments with the many computers is a remote network installation. With this method, the operating system installation files are stored on a server so that a client computer can access the files remotely to begin the installation. A software package such as Remote Installation Services or the RIS, R -I -S, RIS is used to communicate the client to access the setup files, download them, and begin the operating system installation because the client computer does not have an operating system installed. So a special environment must be used to boot the computer, connect to the network, and communicate with the server to begin the installation process. This special environment is known as the pre-boot execution environment or we call it PXE. For the PXE or pre-boot pre execution environment to work, um, the NIC or NIC must be PXE enabled. This functionality may come from the BIOS or the firmware on the NIC license for special instructions on the network to start the PXE or the Preboot Execution Environment PXE. When we say unattended network, so unattended network installation is another network based installation allows a Windows system to be installed or upgraded with a little user intervention. So the Windows unattended installation is based on the little installation on an answer file. So this file contains simple text that instructs Windows set up how to configure and answer the operating system or the OS. So to perform, perform, to perform a uh, Windows unattended installation, uh, set up that .exe. So set up that .exe must be run with the user option found in the answer file. The installation process begins as the usual, but instead of prompting the user. So set up uses the answer listed in the answer file. To customize a standard Windows 10 installation, the system image manager or the SIM, SIM is used to create the setup answer file. You can also add packages such as applications or driver to answer files. The answer file is copied to the distribution save shared folder on a server. So at this point, we can do one of two things. So the first is to run the unattended but that file. So on the client machine, to prepare the hard drive and install the operating system or the OS from the server over the network. And the second is to create a boot disk that boots the computer and connects to the distribution shared folder on the server. Uh, you can you then run a box file containing a set of instructions to install the OS over the network. So remember, the system image manager or the SIM is a part of the Windows Automated Installation Kit or the AIK and can be downloaded from the Microsoft website. Here is the video demonstration of, on how to restore and recover the system on Windows 10 installation. So here,
Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the system restore functionality in the advanced troubleshooting options in your Windows 10 computer. So, the first thing I'd recommend doing is performing a hard power off three times in a row. So, turn on your computer and then turn it off, turn it on, turn it off again. You want to do that three times. And you want to get to a screen that says repairing automatic repair and showing right now on my screen. However, if you're unable to get to an automatic repair screen that we are going to be getting to in a couple minutes, which you can actually see is right now on my screen, I'd recommend you download the Windows 10 Media Creation Utility from Microsoft. And you want to boot your computer from the Windows 10 ISO through either a supported USB flash drive or a DVD. Please keep in mind you do have to have a dedicated device and it will delete any other items or files that are on that media. So Microsoft has made it pretty straightforward and I will include a link in the description of the video for the media creation utility just so you guys can figure out how to get it in case you're unable to do it by just restarting your computer three times. But anyway we can see the automatic repair utility is up on the screen right here. Your PC did not start correctly. Press restart to restart your PC which can sometimes fix the problem. You can also press advanced options to try other options to repair your PC. You want to select advanced options. Underneath choose an option, you want to left click on the troubleshoot tile which says reset your PC or see advanced options. You want to select advanced options again. And now the first tile should say system restore. Use a restore point recorder on your PC to restore windows. Left click on that. Should say restore system files and settings. System restore can help fix problems that might be making your computer run slowly or stop responding. System Restore does not affect any of your documents, pictures, or other personal data. Recently installed programs and drivers might be uninstalled. Left click on Next. Now I would recommend going back to your most recently created restore point here. And I'm going to select that in this tutorial. And then I'm going to select Next. And then you want to click on the Finish button to initiate the process. And then click Yes. And this will take a couple minutes to run, so just be patient.
Okay, so it says system restore completed successfully. The system has been restored. Your documents have not been affected. Left click on the restart button right here. Okay, so we're back on the lock screen here. So I'm gonna swipe it up. I'm gonna type in my computer password. And there we go guys, we're locked back into our Windows computer. So pretty straightforward, and I do hope this brief video was able to give you guys some help. And as always, thank you for watching, and I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. If your Windows 10 computer stops working after you've installed a program or an update, you probably wish it had a big undo button. Well, it does, and it's called System Restore, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it. This is Dave's Tech Rescue, where I solve your problems with computers, internet, and technology. If you have a question you'd like to ask me, leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss my next video where I might be answering your question. Today's question, my computer has stopped working. It was fine before Windows installed the latest updates. How do I get it working again? Well, you might not realise it, but Windows is always making plans in case something goes wrong. Every time you install a program, Windows takes a snapshot of your computer's settings. If the program causes serious problems, like the computer turns off for no reason or you get strange error messages, then you should be able to turn the clock back to when the snapshot was made, and everything should work again. It's called System Restore, and it protects you whenever you install updates, programs, or new hardware, like if you add a printer. You don't have to worry about losing any documents or personal files because System Restore doesn't affect these. However, when your computer starts having problems like this, it's a good idea to think about making a backup if you don't already have one. There are a couple of ways to access System Restore, depending on whether or not you can start your computer. I'm going to show you both ways, and I'm also going to show you how you can check that your computer is being protected by System Restore, because you never know when you might need it. Before you start, you should remove anything that you've plugged in recently. If you've installed new hardware, like a new graphics card, then you should shut down the computer, unplug it from the mains power supply, and remove the new hardware. If Windows starts up, but you're getting strange error messages or other symptoms, then you can access System Restore from within Windows. First though, if you know you've installed a program recently, it's a good idea to remove that program and see if it makes a difference. Let's take a quick look at how to remove a program. Make sure you close and save anything you have open. Then click on the Start menu and click on Settings, which is the gear symbol. Then go into Apps. You should see a list of all the apps on your computer. You can put this list in date order. Click Sort By and select Installation Date. The newest apps should be at the top. If you suspect one of these caused your problem, you can select it and click Uninstall. I'm just showing you this as an example, I don't have a problem with this app. Then you should restart the computer and see if the problem has gone. If you still have the same issue, then you should open System Restore. Click on the Start menu or Cortana and type Recovery. When you see Recovery, click on it. Its icon has a blue screen with a clock and a green arrow. Then click on Open System Restore. System Restore should appear and it shows you when the most recent program or update was installed. It's a good idea to start with this as a restore point, but I'm going to show you how to choose other restore points. 
So click on the other option, choose a different restore point and click next. You'll see the most recent restore point again and you can see if there were more restore points by ticking this box below. It looks like my computer has made a few restore points over the last few weeks. This is good to know because if the most recent point doesn't help there are other things we can try. But for now I'm going to select the most recent restore point and click next. Now pay attention to the notices below, and if you're happy to go on, click finish. Then read this message, and if you're happy to proceed, click next. Then your computer will go to a screen like this. You'll need to wait a while for the system restore. It took about 25 minutes on my computer. When it's finished, you'll get a notice telling you whether the system restore was successful or not. You can click close on this. If the restore failed for some reason, you can open System Restore again and choose a different restore point. Click on Choose a different restore point and click Next. And then Show more restore points. Then you just need to try a different restore point. You can work through them all until you find one that works. Something I've found is that System Restore can sometimes tell you that it's failed, but the problem seems to have been fixed anyway. So if that happens, I think you can assume that it has worked. After you've done a System Restore like this, you can normally work out what caused the problem in the first place from the label of the System Restore point that worked. Sometimes you can just install the software or update again, and the second time round it just works. But if you get the same problem the second time round, you'll need to roll it back again with System Restore, and then you'll need to work out if there is a problem with what you're trying to install. So now we've covered a basic System Restore, we can now look at what we need to do if the computer won't start up. If your computer won't start up, you'll find that it goes into automatic repair, where it tries to diagnose the fault and fix it. If automatic repair can't fix the problem, you'll see this screen. Your PC did not start correctly. So now you'll need to try System Restore. You can get to System Restore by clicking on Advanced Options. Then click on Troubleshoot and Advanced Options. Now click on System Restore. Click on your username and enter your password. If one of your user accounts is an administrator, you should sign in as that user. When System Restore starts, click Next. Now you're on the same screen we saw in the first part of this video. Choose a restore point from the list and follow the instructions on the screen to restore from it. Once the System Restore has finished, you should be able to start your computer as normal. While we're looking at System Restore, it's worth knowing how to check your computer is being protected by System Restore. Open File Explorer, click on this PC, then right click on it and click Properties. Click System Protection. Look for the Protection Settings box and make sure Protection is turned on for your main hard drive. If it isn't, click Configure. Then select Turn on System Protection. Then click OK. Then you can close all these windows. Now you can be confident that your computer is making restore points whenever it needs to. Did System Restore work for you? Please let me know in the comments below how you got on, and if you found this video useful, please give it the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more tutorials from me, click on my face below and hit the red subscribe button. And while you're here, why not check out one of my other videos, like how to back up your Windows 10 computer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And the upgrade method. So the recovery partition is often hidden to prevent it from being used for anything other than restoration. So to restore the computer using the recovery partition, you often must use a special key or something key combination which the computer is starting so when the computer is starting sometimes the option to restore from the factory recovery partition is located in the BIOS or a program the manufacturer that is accessed in Windows so the next is the upgrade methods so, when upgrading methods, uh, upgrading Windows 
Windows 7 or Windows 8 uh, upgrading to Windows 10. So Windows 7 going to Windows 8 and going to when you update it into upgrading it into Windows 10. So the Windows installation program or the setup that exe will perform an in place upgrade which automatically preserves all data settings applications and drives from the existing operating system version so all of this will be safe effort because there is no need for complex deployment infrastructure so that is the recovery partition and upgrade methods thank you for watching and listening to my reports so once again this is Ariel Giuliano Balintay student of St. Nicholas College Pampanga once again thank you